brain isn't fully developed and won't be until age 25. In fact, recent research has found that adult and teen brains work differently. Adults think with the prefrontal cortex, the brain's rational part. This is the part of the brain that responds to a situation with good judgment and an awareness of long-term consequences. Teens process information with the amygdala. This is the emotional part. In teens' brains, the connections between the emotional part of the brain and the decision-making center are still developing and not always at the same rate. That's why when teens have overwhelming emotional input, they can't explain later what they were thinking. They were not thinking as much as they were feeling. Research suggests the human brain consists of about 86 billion neurons. Each neuron forms connections to other neurons, which could add up to 1000 trillion connections. Over time, these neurons can combine, increasing stress capacity. Actually, the amount of information the brain can store in its many trillion of synapses is not infinite, but it is large enough that the amount we can learn is not limited by the brain stress capacity. However, there are other factors that do limit how much you can learn. The first is our limited attention. We can only pay attention to a small number of things at once, and paying attention is usually necessary to create new memories because we have only so many waking hours, and a good night's sleep is necessary to create lasting memories. This limits how many new memories you can form. The second factor is that the order in which we learn certain types of information matters. The things that we learn first are usually the strongest and anything learned later will often be weaker. For example, once one has acquired a phobia of snakes, it will be difficult to overcome that fear. Even if it can be suppressed through therapy, it will often return later. Finally, there are limits that have to do with our brain sensitivity to particular kinds of information at different points in development. For example, research on language acquisition has shown that our knowledge of speech sounds becomes ingrained within the first year of life, so that later in life it is difficult to learn new speech sounds that only exist in other languages. information travels up to an impressive 268 miles per hour. This is faster than Formula 1 race car switches top power at 240 miles per hour. When a neuron is stimulated, it generates an electrical impulse that travels from cell to cell. The signals carried by the large diameter, myelinated neurons that link the spinal cord to the muscles can travel at speeds 120 meters per second, which is exactly 268 miles per hour. The most common myth is that we only use 10% of our brain, or the idea that human beings really utilize a tiny percentage of their brain's power and potential. The popular and widely spread belief that we only use or have access to 10% of our brain's power is often used to speculate about the extent of human abilities if only we could utilize our brain's full capacity. People often experience the shortcomings of their own mental abilities such as failing to understand a complex math problem or forgetting some vital piece of information. It's perhaps because of this that people frequently feel they possess some untapped potential if only they could unlock the inaccessible portion of their mind. In reality, you use all of your brain. The only instances where there are unused regions of the brain are those in which brain damage or disease has destroyed certain regions. That's capable of abstraction and higher order learning and philosophizing, a metabolically white hot energy devouring machine, and it's totally made of fat. The human brain is nearly 60% fat by total weight, and that big powerful brain needs to be provided with certain types of fat, both saturated and unsaturated, throughout life to provide a balance of structural integrity and fluidity to its cells. 
By and large, we get these fats from our diets, and what we eat gets incorporated directly into the membranes of the cells that make up the brain and nervous system. The neural membranes and insulating sites are especially dependent on the long chain fatty acids. We can also build these essential fats from plant based precursor molecules to a small degree, but this process is inefficient and does not produce sufficient quantities to fuel the brain. For optimal health and function, we are far better off consuming these essential molecules ready made from what we eat from nature. actually generate enough electricity to power a small light bulb. This is possible because there is a network of billions of specialized nerve cells or neurons connected in the human body, some 100 billion in the brain alone. These neurons transmit electrical signals around the body to relay important information to and from the brain. This messaging system is continuous and rivals the most sophisticated communication systems in the world, including the internet. Each neuron generates a small amount of electricity. When we add all these neurons together, the electricity generated in the brain can power a small light bulb. That's about 23 watts of power. When you think about it, it's really impressive. Given that the brain can control all the major functions in the human body and still find time to generate a little spare electricity. That's pretty cool. enough sleep may experience the effects of sleep deprivation. Difficulty in remembering things is one of the most common symptoms. Since the brain does not have sufficient time to create new pathways for the information you have recently learned, sleep deprivation often affects how memories are consolidated. Other potential cognitive impacts include trouble learning and focusing, reduced decision making skills, and poor emotional and behavioral control. How much sleep you should get each night largely depends on your age. In addition to adults, studies have concluded children experience a stronger memory consolidation after a good night's sleep. That said, excessive sleep can also lead to cognitive impairments. Every person should strive for the optimal amount of nightly sleep, as too little or too much can have negative repercussions. we have around 70,000 thoughts go through our waking minds on any given day. Does that seem like a lot? You have got to consider how many of those thoughts are focused on eating, walking, trying not to say the wrong thing, deciding on whether or not to buy a coffee, or in stressing panicking. 70,000 thoughts don't stress too far when you consider what we go through and how fast our brain works. 70,000 thoughts can go just like that. The key is to spend quality time with all thoughts, spend time shutting down and shutting out distractions and think things through. Think about the things that matter. Think about the people that matter. Make sure that the bulk of those 70,000 isn't blown like some change. When you start to consider how finite your existence and your time and the process of your brain actually are, you can see how precious the level of mindfulness that requires us to sit up and pay attention. When it comes to brain size, bigger doesn't always mean better. As human continues to evolve, scientists say our brains are actually getting smaller. The downsizing of human brains is an evolutionary fact that took science writer Kathleen McCulty by surprise. She tells NPR's Zachy Lydon. She learned that was the story up to 20,000 years ago. Then the brains of our ancestors reversed course and started getting smaller. And they have been shrinking ever since. Cro-Magnon man who lived in Europe 20,000 to 30,000 years ago had the biggest brain of any human species. In comparison, today's human brain is about 10% smaller. Metsuka is roughly equivalent to a tennis ball in size. 
The experts are not sure about the implications of this evolutionary trend. Some think it might be a dumping down process. One cognitive scientist, David Gary, argues that as human society grows increasingly complex, individuals don't need to be as intelligent in order to survive and reproduce. The pain experience for all of us begins when unpleasant stimuli activate sensory nerve fibers called nociceptors receptors. These specialized fibers which are located in skin, muscles, joints, and some organs transmit pain signals from the periphery to the brain where the masses of pain is ultimately perceived. The brain itself does not feel pain because there are no nociceptor receptors located in brain tissue itself. This feature explains why neurosurgeons can operate on brain tissue without causing a patient discomfort and in some cases can even perform surgery while the patient is awake. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next time.